Secondly, that call from Eric went a lot better than I was expecting. I thought I was about to get torn up, but uh, Eric is a listener and a viewer on our our show, as he mentioned, and he's called in before, so we appreciate him. Um, You know, I I, I go back to, uh, there was a lot of of, uh, hate spewed. Uh, A lot of people didn't necessarily like what I did in terms of upsetting Florida. I don't even think you can call it an upset of Florida. I think Kentucky's probably going to be favored in that game if they're not already. Um, But, you know, Georgia... And Florida, Tennessee, those teams aren't used to losing to Kentucky. And this is not your father's or grandfather's Kentucky football program. Mark Stoops has done a great job of, of building this program to what it is now, heading into his 10th season there in Lexington. So I, I think teams better start recognizing what this Kentucky team is about. And they're about running the football, playing physical, and being great on defense. So I, I like where they are. And as, as Eric mentioned, I love the way that it sets up on November 19th coming on back-to-back-to-back games against Florida, Tennessee, and Mississippi State. I I think that's why I feel so confident about uh, Georgia's ability to get upset there after having to play that that streak of three games straight before going to Lexington. You know, I'm glad you said it's not your father's or your grandfather's Kentucky team because that was kind of the argument that I was in, and I was sending you those tweets last week. I was going back and forth a few times on Twitter with a Florida Gator fan who sent me the all-time record between Kentucky and Florida, and he was like, how in the world would you think that the Wildcats are going to go to the swamp and upset the Gators? Look at the all-time record. And I was like, I don't think the all-time record represents where either of these programs are right now. So I'm with you. This is a Kentucky team that I do believe if they find success this year, we have to move away from that what Kentucky was 10 years ago and look at what they are now. That being said, uh, I want to talk about your Florida Gator squad. You've spent a lot of time touring the new facilities. You've talked to Coach Napier. I want to start with the facilities because I also saw our guy Peter Burns was down there, I think yesterday or the day before. And these things look beautiful. We know it's an arms race when it comes comes to facilities and recruiting in the SEC. So what was the most exciting part about the new digs down there? And for those of us who haven't seen it yet, describe what you saw. Well, first and foremost, Alyssa, I got I to gotta say I was jealous uh, that I didn't have an opportunity to experience those types of facilities when I was at Florida. When we wanted to take a nap, we didn't have zero gravity chairs in our lockers. We had to grab our laundry bags and, and a towel and, and use that as a pillow and a blanket and lay in front of our lockers on the floor. So it's a Long way from 1995, obviously, but, um, you know, I, I think the thing that excites me the most about it, Alyssa, is the attention to detail. Everything is so well thought out for the, the student athletes experience, the efficiency, uh, everything being self-contained and, and coming in off the field and having the ability to shower off in the mud room and get right in the cold tank and, and moving into the cryotherapy booth and having the Norma Tech in, in every player's locker. Like, it is such a, a well oiled machine now that really there's no excuse for not being in the best possible playing shape and uh, best possible uh, condition as a as an individual and a, a team as they get ready to play this season going forward. You talk about attention to detail and everyone who I have spoken to, I haven't gotten to go down there yet and see the new staff and talk to Coach Napier, but I know you have. Everybody talks about the attention to detail that Coach Napier brings to every single nook and cranny of this Florida football team. What have you noticed in that arena? And as we've been making these bold predictions and picking schedules, picking games, win losses, what do you think the ceiling is genuinely for this Florida team this year as we stand right now, still with a lot of things unanswered? Well, first and foremost, I'm very fortunate to have had a chance to call this the spring game in Gainesville and had a chance to sit down with Coach Napier and go over everything as it relates to what he's building here and the, the plan that's in place. And, and you mentioned it very detail oriented, very involved in every aspect of the, the football program. Um, he's got a great plan that's already showing uh, that it's paying dividends uh, on the recruiting trail. Uh, I think Florida fans have to be a little more realistic too and understand that the, the, the program's not in the best shape right now. It's going to take some time. We got to be patient, which is not a, a great quality of, of college football fans in general or specifically Florida football fans. But I do think the, the, maybe the, the best legitimizing thing that I've heard was when I was in Tuscaloosa for Alabama's Pro Day earlier in the spring. I had two different people come up to me unsolicited and say, hey, you guys got the right guy down there. And when Alabama people are telling you that you got the right guy, you, you know there's some, some credibility behind that. So I, I think as a, as a Florida guy, I'm excited about where this program is, is headed. And um, you know, I think this conference is better when teams like Florida and Tennessee are amongst the, the best in the conference. And I'm looking for 
a little balance. Time to get the, the East back to being somewhat more competitive uh, than, than they are right now as it relates to the, the, the strength of the two divisions. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.